It's Katie. Welcome back to Still the Spotlight. If you've been on my channel a while or if you've seen any videos that are more than two and a half to three years old, then I'm sure you can agree that I have significantly leveled up my style game in that period. And I thought today I'd let you in on the secret. It is simply me falling down the deep dark rabbit hole that is K-pop. Once I was introduced to K-fashion and K-beauty, there was just no turning back for me, which is why I'm super excited for today's video sponsor, which is a Korean cosmetics online beauty shop called Jose. And I believe they have a limited time deal going where if you join, you get $3 store credit. And today I'm going to be showing you some of my top K-beauty picks and how I apply it to my face. And then we're also gonna get into some of my K fashion essentials as well. I know recently I've been doing a lot more colorful, flamboyant styles, so I think this will be a nice change of pace. Everything is super wearable, super interchangeable as well. I love a good mix and match moment, so yeah. I suppose we should just get into it. Let's get it, let's get it. I'm so pleased we got to start with my number one holy grail K beauty discovery that I'm just never turning back from which is cushion foundations for my skin type and just like my needs this cannot be beat i swear i just feel like they somehow managed to have quite good coverage while still allowing it to look like skin like it never looks too cakey or anything like that it just gives a really nice airbrushed sort of finish Apparently I'm just extra scatterbrained today because I haven't even shown you the reference picture for the look I'm trying to achieve. And typically when I think of K-beauty, I think quite soft and subtle, dewy skin sort of vibe. I wanted to switch it up today and taking inspiration from my queen, Hyuna. I absolutely love the looks that she did during her flash hour comeback concept. I think it still brings some of those key elements, but it's amped up a little bit more, almost a little bit more sultry as well, although that could just be her charisma coming through. But yes, now that we have some idea of what I'm actually doing today, let's get on with it. Actually, even um, my lock screen is literally Triple H. That is how obsessed I am. Actually, shall we talk about K-pop for a second? Because I feel like it's been a hot minute since I have on this channel and a lot has been happening. It's also coming up to end of year, which means award season, which I love seeing the end of year performances. But let me know what some of your favorite comebacks have been this year. I've actually been really into the girl group concepts more so, I think. Like, absolutely loved Itzy Not Shy, um, Twice's new one, Everglow. That is such a vibe. Like, it feels like 80s badass. Mm, I don't know. I really, really like it though. I know I've seen a few of you guys commenting about how much you love um, TXT's styling in their recent comeback, which 100% agree. The crop tops, the pink cowboy hats, like I am absolutely living. Personally, my favorite um, title track from them this year though was Can't You See Me? Like obsessed with that song still. Stray Kids have had an absolute monster of a year. I feel like every other week they're bringing out content and I'm like, um, how are they doing this? For me, one of the groups that really drew my attention the most this year was NCT. And they were one of those groups that I've kind of always been into, you know, but this year they just dragged me down the rabbit hole, became a fully fledged stan, if you will. Make-A-Wish is still on repeat. Xiao Jun, Xiao can you guys do that? Xiao he has been coming for my bias list. Oh my goodness, I love his part in the song so much. I am actually a Taeyong bias though. Um, I feel like that probably comes as no surprise. I don't know, I just feel like the energy I give off lets you know that I am a Taeyong bias, you know what I mean? Oh, actually, I need to show you this photo card. Um, let me go get it. Ta-da! Hopefully this is focusing or in shot, but oh my goodness, this this is my prized possession, you don't even understand. Uh, my friend Savannah and I did like a care package swap for our birthdays and she included this. I'm still not over it, it is absolutely everything. Um, I actually filmed like a whole unboxing of it but the entire thing was just me giggling and being like, oh my god, every time I open something and I was like, mm, no one wants to watch this. <laughs> But we are doing packages for Christmas as well. So let me know if it's something you'd be interested in. I could kind of show you guys what I got her and me packing it up all cute and stuff. And then maybe include me unboxing mine as well. 
let me know i don't know typically i do try to stick to just fashion content even this is <laughs> outside my comfort zone and box but i don't know i feel like i want to add a couple of other things into the mix here and there because it does take a lot of time and planning to do those dressing like inspired lookbooks and it's not something that you can do like twice a week every single week so i want to be able to throw in um some other content here and there as well to break it up i personally prefer eyebrow pencils because hello i am very lazy and this is actually one of my favorite ones i've tried because the tip of it is actually so fine that i feel like you are able to create brush stroke like hairs i don't know if i just do my makeup in a really weird order but i'm gonna do the rest of my base makeup now like bronzer blush highlighter and then move on to the eyes i try to focus my bronzer a little bit higher up than the hollows of my cheeks because i do have quite like a round face shape so we're trying to thin her out just a little bit i suppose i don't know if it actually helps but it is a hack that i saw on tiktok and decided to run with it it's the lack of chin for me so i've got two blush options and i love both of these this one is a cream blush it's like the cute instagrammable little heart shaped button this one's super peachy my new favorite to do the really sun-kissed glow but for the eye look we're going for i think that a more rosy sort of shade would be a better suit and this one is honestly just as adorable the little piglet pink indent on it i really like the pigment on this and it's easy to blend out as well so it doesn't matter if you're too heavy-handed at first you can easily buff it away i'm just an absolute sucker for blush i feel like it is the one part of your look that really makes you feel like a little cartoon character so big fan i do take it quite high up towards the eyes and typically i'd swipe across the nose as well but today i'm just gonna do just a smidge on the tip again the packaging is just so cute i mean i feel like that could be said for literally any korean products but i'm gonna take a little bit of this highlighter this one is quite glittery but i do think that that actually works in with the concept for today perfect like fairy glitter whenever i watch k beauty videos i feel like more often than not one of these palettes will pop up and i actually have two different shades but they have heaps to choose from and obviously the first one is coral talk like i said all about those peachy tones and then the one we'll probably use more of today is this rusted rose it's a little bit more deep perfect for those sultry sort of looks i'm starting out with this light shimmery pink all through the crease and probably onto the lid as well i'm actually kind of surprised that i haven't tried recreating this makeup look sooner because like i said i love hyanna and her stylist team pretty much hits it out of the park for me every single time when it comes to makeup and outfits like that would be my dream job even if i was just there to steam her clothes that'd be amazing but let me know what group or soloist and it doesn't even have to be k-pop like if you have a western celebrity just let me know which one you think hits the nail on the head like 99 percent of the time when it comes to style i should really do a follow-up on my dressing like style icon sort of video i was actually thinking okay um let me know what you think of combining it with zodiac signs as well so that was like a style icon for every zodiac sign hmm i don't know something i've been thinking about lately so usually i'll do like a base color and then on the outer corner i might deepen it a little bit and then highlight in the inner corner however for this look i think i actually need to use a deeper color in both the outer and inner corner so let's see if i can pull this off this shade is so pretty though and all of these are blending so nicely i know it probably looks really messy right now and you know what, I can't even guarantee that it won't look messy by the end of this, but I will try to fix it up. I'm just tapping this shimmer all through the center, not just on the lid, but also through the crease as well. I'm just going to apply the same concept we did up top to the bottom lash line as well. I've actually had a few requests lately to do a K-drama outfits inspired video, which I think would be really, really fun. So if you guys have any particular specific requests of characters you want to see, do let me know that as well. Um, I actually haven't watched a K-drama for a little while. I don't know about you guys, but I go in like waves of what mood I'm in to watch things. And recently I've just been watching a lot of anime, um, but I don't know, I'm feeling the K-drama urge come back in. The last one I watched was actually It's Okay Not To Be Okay, which is probably one of my favorites that I've seen. And her style is mwah impeccable personally i don't know how people make like a pressed glitter shadow look so effective it just never works out for me so i found that the easiest cure for that is 
glitter liners. These are two of my absolute favorites. And the good thing about this one is that the applicator is so fine. So you don't just like dump a whole heap of gloop onto your eye. You can definitely build it up to the desired effect. Of course, carrying it down under the eye as well. I'm just trying to keep it in almost like a upside down triangle sort of shape. And then I just want to pop a little bit of shimmer right in the inner corner there. To match in with this look, I wanted to actually go for something a little bit more subtle, natural. So I have two brown eyeliner options. I'm gonna try using the pencil to smoke out the bottom lash line a little bit. And then using the pen, I'm gonna do just a straight out flick with a really small wing. Oh my God, so back at it again with the world's cutest packaging. But the point of the matter is choosing a lip shade. And typically for these sort of tones, I would opt for something more like this. It has more of kind of like a brick undertone to it. And I think if you blotted it out, it would kind of be quite natural and really let the eyes do the talking. However, in the reference picture, Kiana somehow manages to pull off the bold eyes and equally bold lip with this ready orange sort of shade. So to stay more true to the original, that's what I'm going with. The final step is the two little like pearl diamantes she has on her cheeks. I didn't have any pearl ones in my collection, but I just have these little silver diamantes, which I think will kind of emulate the same effect, especially from far away, which is how I prefer to be seen. This is very up close and personal today. <laughs> So there's definitely a few specific K fashion items that I've adopted into my own wardrobe over the years. And today I was lucky enough to pick out some examples from one of my favorite online K fashion retailers, which is Mix Mix. So I've got a couple of outfit ideas to show you how I like to style each piece. Of course, I had to start out with the one that's had the biggest influence on not just my wardrobe, but seemingly just about everyone's at this point, which is the sweater vest. Probably the most classic option when styling these is a button-up shirt, pleated skirt, and some Mary Janes. This really plays into the soft and preppy themes that it's often associated with in K-pop concepts. I've had this Jenny Kim look saved for the longest time, and finally, I have the perfect sweater vest to recreate it. Obviously we kept things the same on the top half, but just switching out the skirt for this tights and boots combo completely changes the vibe. Personally, if I was to wear it, I feel like I might opt out of the hat or switch it for something else. But of course, I wanted to emulate a similar look to Jenny's original. I absolutely love the fit of this vest because since it's cropped and almost cinches in at the waistband a little bit, it means it still looks great without having to wear a layer underneath. This instantly helps it lose those preppy connotations and allows you to play around with some more funky styling options, which is what led me to throwing on my cowboy boots for no real reason. And then finishing off with the leather blazer to really pull the look together. Oversized hoodies and sweatshirts are obviously pretty popular everywhere, but I do feel like when it comes to K-fashion brands, oversized is the default, which I love because it makes layering these really cozy fits so much easier. Today, I started with a hoodie underneath and then layered this quilted vest over top. I teamed that all up with these subtle plaid patterned pants, and I just feel like these add a little bit of extra flavor while still keeping an effortless feel. And of course, finishing it all off with the trusty old bucket hat. If you aren't so into that more frumpy sort of styling, you can also play around with proportions by going for this long oversized sweatshirt teamed with a shorter mini skirt, making a really pretty silhouette. The graphic on this one is simple, but still very cute. And I just tried to balance out the layers of cream and black throughout the entire fit with the little collared shirt underneath. And of course my leg warmers, you guys, I cannot go a video without featuring these. Long line blazers are a timeless essential in general, but all my favorites just happen to be from K fashion brands. The key to finding a good one for me is the length. I don't want it to look like I'm swimming in it, but definitely want it long enough to cover my butt. I think this creates the illusion of elongation, especially when teamed with flares like this. My biggest takeaway from K-pop stylists though, is that you can throw a harness on practically any outfit and it will instantly look cooler. So thank you for putting up with my one and only styling hack for the last couple of years. 
okay, again, back to why I feel like the length is so crucial because if it's long enough to be a dress, sometimes I feel a little bit uncomfortable. Like I'm not wearing pants, the outfit isn't complete, but if it is long enough to just have the skirt peak at the bottom, then mwah, perfection in my opinion. This one also sits really well unbuttoned as well if that's what you prefer. Wow, what a shocker, pleated skirts. I mean, I've already styled them repeatedly in this video, but here it is with a category all on its own. These are absolutely my go-to bottoms, especially considering it doesn't get too cold here, so pants are often out of the question. The styling options are practically endless, but I wanted to show you this all black look that is one of my go-tos, simply because this lace turtleneck is the most iconic layering piece right now. I cannot get enough. Switching into the gray option now, which I think I prefer simply for the wider waistband, although I am just gonna cover it up with this cute little vest number anyway, which by the way, instantly made me feel like an honorary member of Twice. I have been living for these outfits on them recently. After seeing such a resurgence in the sweater vest, I definitely think these more tailored options will be the next step. Also, they're gonna be great for layering, which I am a tad obsessed with, if you couldn't already tell. Which brings us to our next piece, baggy cardigans, because I decided to style this one over the top of the outfit I already had on, and you know what? It became my favorite of the entire video. It once again plays around with those long and short proportions that I love, which by the way, this skirt is obviously incredibly short. I'm 5'6 for reference and this is like, damn, you better be wearing some shorts under there. So keep that in mind. This style of cardigan teams beautifully in a more casual setting as well. Here, I kept on the same turtleneck, but switched into some baggier, wide-legged jeans. This combination is honestly so simple. I don't even know what to say, but hey, I guess sometimes you just gotta go back to your One Direction days and remember the wise words of Harry Styles. Simple but effective. On the flip side of that, these little cropped button-up cardigans have also been on pretty much every female K-pop idol for the last two years. And more recently, I've been really into these blue shades we've been seeing them in, hence today's choice. The butterfly graphic is a nice touch, which I actually saw Joy wearing something very similar recently as well. And at this point, it is probably no surprise that I said, hey, let's bring out some more cowboy boots to finish this look off. Just like the more oversized cardigan, I had to pair this one up with a pair of baggy jeans as well. This is pretty much like K-pop idol of Judy look 101 at this point, but I do really like how this color pairs with the super light wash denim. This is the final look for me today though, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of combination video. Check the description box for all the links to the K-beauty products from Jose and the K-fashion items from Mix Mix. Hopefully I'll catch you in the comments so we can talk all things K-pop and K-dramas or maybe even over on my Instagram at still the spotlight. Thanks guys. Bye.